Hey everybody. Today I want to talk about topping off our tanks and in particular I want to talk about the people who just top off their tanks perpetually and never do water changes. They just keep putting fresh water in the tank and they think that this is good enough for a uh, water changer to keep our tanks nice and healthy and it's really not. There are ways you can set your tank up to never really have to do a water change, but you've really got to set it up that way from the beginning. You've really got to know what you're doing. You've got to understand water chemistry a lot better than I do. And you've got to make sure you've got the right nutrients and minerals in your substrate so that the water gets remineralized as time goes on. And there's a lot more that goes into simply setting up a water change free tank. It's not that easy and you really have to do it right from the beginning. You can't simply decide to stop doing water changes one day and call top offs good enough. So the two main reasons that perpetually doing top offs is bad, uh, both involve water chemistry and they're both sort of at opposite ends of the spectrum. So first of all, they both stem from the same issue, and that is when you do perpetual top-offs, you're effectively distilling the water in your tank. If you think about the dissolved solids that are in your tank, regardless of what they are, whether it's calcium or nitrate or phosphate or iron, zinc, magnesium, doesn't matter what it is, dissolved solids stay in the tank. When the water evaporates out of it, the solids are left behind. Think about if you boil a pan of salt water away. You got all that crusty salt left over and the water is gone. The same thing's happening in your aquarium. It's not to that extreme, but over time, every time you add more water to your tank, you're putting more dissolved solids in there. And then over time, as the water evaporates out, those dissolved solids stay behind. And you add more water that has more dissolved solids in it that adds to the total amount that's in the tank. And while you may be sort of diluting what's in there, you know, you add more water, you put more volume of water in there, but you've, you've, you haven't reduced the total number of dissolved solids. It's still going to be the same amount in the tank overall. And you just keep adding to that and adding to that and adding to that. So the problems you can run into are, in my case, I have very, very soft water. In fact, my water is so soft, there's virtually nothing in it. So I run into the problem of my water would become demineralized over time and it would lose its redox potential. And that basically in a nutshell means that there's no more electrolytes in the water and the fish basically can't live without the electrolytes in the water. It's like trying to live in sterile water. You just can't do it. And so in my case, while things like nitrate and phosphate and all the organics would be building up in the tank and those numbers would be getting higher and higher and higher, the little tiny bit of um, mineralization I have in my water, that would slowly be depleted over time and eventually I'd have water that was loaded with biological waste but didn't have any sort of electrolyte capacity and my water, my tank would just eventually collapse and crash at that point and that's something that will definitely happen if you just keep doing top off after top off after top off and never do a water change the other end of the spectrum is if you have tap water that's got some degree of hardness even if it's not really hard water if you've got five or ten degrees of hardness. Every time you do a water change, or, or not a water change, every time you do a top off, you're adding more calcium and magnesium into your tank. And when the water evaporates, that calcium and the magnesium gets left behind. So you do another top off, you're adding more calcium and magnesium. So while you check your ta tap water, your tap water may be five degrees hardness, but over a few months period of simply doing top offs, your tank may be off the charts as far as the hardness goes. So you really got to pay attention to what's going on with your water. And that's generally why when advice is being doled out in these sort of generalized terms you get these small numbers a 10% water change every week you know you do them frequent you keep them small and that keeps your water nice and refreshed I can't suggest to you oh go do a great big water change because I don't know what water you're starting with and I don't know what water you're replacing it with and a great big water change might be disastrous to your tank so if you've gotten yourself into a situation where you might be saying, oh, well, gee, I haven't, you know, done a water change in a year. I just keep topping the tank off and everything seems fine. Don't panic. Don't rush in there and go do a massive water change to replace that water. That's probably going to kill your fish. At this point, 
If you've gotten yourself into this position, sort of like old tank syndrome, what you need to do to get yourself out of that situation is begin doing small water changes. Do, do a 10% water change, give it a few days, let the fish adjust, do another 10% water change. And do a series of small water changes over a period of time, and that will bring your tank back into balance. It'll bring all those organics down. If you've got way high hardness, you know, if you've been dumping calcium and magnesium into the tank over and over and over again, you'll start to bring that number down and bring it to a more reasonable degree of hardness. And again, you'll begin reducing all of the accumulated nitrate and phosphate and all that kind of stuff that's in there too. But you don't want to do that kind of stuff too quickly. Uh, I'm not going to get into it now. I'm not going to discuss nitrate shock. I personally don't believe nitrate shock is really a thing, but osmotic shock is definitely a thing. And if you've got fish that are in a certain amount of total dissolved solids and their bodies have slowly adjusted to being in this amount of dissolved solids, they're osmoregulating based on that amount of dissolved solids. And it takes a while for the fish's body to adjust. So if you suddenly do a huge water change and you drop those dissolved solids through the floor, now the fish whose body is sort of adapted to being way up here in the dissolved solid range, now it's suddenly in this water that doesn't have enough dissolved solids in it and you can actually kill your fish by doing that. So again, if you've gotten yourself into the situation where you've just been doing top offs over and over and over again for a long period of time, if you want to keep doing that, it's your business. But if you do want to sort of get yourself out of that habit and maybe get into doing more frequent uh, water changes, don't go in there and do a huge water change. That will be devastating to your tank and you'll probably blame me for it. So get in there, do small water changes, do a series of small water changes. And you may have to do this for a few weeks. I've had tanks that even though I maintain them, they just kind of get away from me a little bit. And it takes three, four, five good big water changes sometimes to really bring those numbers uh, back down into a more reasonable area. And I do know what kind of water I have in and out of my tanks. And so I am safe to do these nice large uh, water changes, 50-60% water change is not that big a deal for my fish at all, but your water may be very different than that, so I can't throw that advice out there in generalized sort of terms. In a generalized sort of way, small and frequent is always going to be your best way to go. Small and frequent. Don't slam your fish with a huge water change. You might do more damage than good. So that's all I got to say for tonight. If you've got any other topics you'd like to hear my thoughts on or discussion topics or anything that you want me to sit down and talk about, I'd be love to hear your uh, suggestions or ideas or whatever. I'll see what I can do about sitting down and getting some thoughts put out there for you. So thanks for watching this one. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget this one here is my 125 gallon tank. Thanks again. I'll see you real soon in the next one.